Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Boxing. I'm Letty. I'm LB. And let's get into the UK fight yeah. we had. So we had UK versus UK this weekend. Yeah, let's get into it. This is uh, this was pretty interesting. Let's get yeah, into it. Yeah, so we had Liam Smith. AKA of, Beefy. Out of the UK yep. versus Chris Eubank Jr. out of the UK as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wow. What a fight. Um yeah. What what did you think? Did you think you know, it was going to go like this? Kind of unexpected. You know, I think the first place we need to start talking about this fight is uh, how the fight kind of happened. Um, and all the buildup. I mean, that was the most exciting part yeah, of this fight. It really was. Um, you know, just the back and forth, the trash talk. Um, it really got us excited for the fight. I mean, we saw uh, Chris Eubank Jr. You know, he showed up in a... Uh, in a Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken jacket, mm-hmm. you know, to the press conference, and you know his thing that he was saying throughout the whole thing is, oh yeah, I only need to be uh fifty percent, fifty percent will get the job done, and so that was his thing, you know, leading up to the fight, and there was a lot of uh, a lot of back and forth, and it ended up, you know, turning personal. I mean, what did you think it about really the buildup? It really did. Of the fight? Um, I thought the buildup was good. I thought that um. Uh, Eubank was kind of getting to Smith when yeah. he was talking in the press conference. I feel like he got to him a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I feel that's when Liam kind of started throwing some personal stuff like yeah. your hairline and yeah. I never seen and, you with girls and yeah, yeah. He said, uh, and, and, uh, yeah, once he, once he touched on that hairline, it got it, personal. Yeah. Then it, then, then it kind of, then, um, then, uh, then uh, Chris Eubank just started letting it all out after that. Yeah, but it was it was back and forth, and uh, it made it made us you know just we were just excited for the fight, you know, just to see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially since we didn't get that Conor Bank fight. Yeah, um, yeah. We wanted to see Eubank back in the ring. Yeah, uh, and yeah, so really kind of like you said, we're really let up and got it even more exciting. Was the trash yeah. talking that they were doing? Great builder, they did a great job selling the fight. They they really did, um, mm-hmm. especially him with that fifty percent. It seemed like he said the same thing with Conor actually. Yeah. 80 per- or something like that in, the, in those lines. Mm-hmm. So it seems like it's his trend yeah. uh, to say. But um, good build up to the fight yeah. in the UK. Walk us through the fight. Yeah. So, so yeah, that was the build up. And so, you know, coming to this fight, you know, we were just excited. You know, sometimes when there's bad blood, it makes for an entertaining fight. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, and so we were excited to see it. So as the kind of fight, uh, as, as once the fight started, it was a, it was a fill out round. Um, Chris Eubank really was out there trying to establish the jab from the beginning round. And, um, you know, he started to get loose, you know, started to loosen up, but it really not too much happened, uh, in the first round. Um, uh, Liam, Liam Smith, you know, he, he was operating out of that, um, that high guard, you know, he was, um, you know, kind of putting on the pressure. He was the one that was on the front foot while Chris Eubank was pretty much on the back foot. But what'd you think? What'd you, yeah. what'd you kind of think about the fight? Um, first, first, actually, I thought before what happened, what happened, um, was I thought Eubank was winning the fight. Um, the first round, like you said, it was kind of a fail. He was, uh, Eubank was trying to establish the jab, but it wasn't like an effective jab. So I kind of yeah. seen Liam kind of take over the first uh, round. Um, but after the first round, I was like, okay, Eubank, you got to step it up to 60%. Yeah. Cause you know, he was like, I'm going to need 50%. I was like, you got to yeah. step it up. So second and third round, I think Eubank had those rounds. He yeah. was definitely more effective with the jab. He was moving around the ring more. And he was holding on when Smith was getting some, you know, success or when he was closing that distance. When he closed out, the distance on him, yeah, he did. He, he was, wrapping up, was wrapping up more. Um, and I think he was doing good again using the jab and keeping Smith out. Mm-hmm. Uh and then it got to the fourth round. Yeah, where but, but yeah, even but I'll say this before we got to that fourth round, um, even when we were watching the fight, you know, I told her, I was like, Oh, it looks like he's starting to, uh, he's starting to warm up. Uh-huh. And that second and third round, especially at the end of that third round, you could definitely tell he was loosening up and he was actually landing, um, a lot of clean shots, uh, on, uh, Liam Smith. You know, he was throwing, he was actually, you know, um, trading a little bit more and he was throwing that uppercut, you know, and he's been known to have a good uppercut. And you can see that he was landing that in the third, in the second, in the third round, and it was being effective. Yeah. Uh, his right hand also started to come alive in the um, in the second and third. You were saying he started to throw those uppercuts. I think that's what he needed because he was having, I mean, and like, like we said, he established his jab more. And every time he did a little bit more of combinations or just did something else besides the jab, he was having more success and hurting yeah, Liam as well. Now, coming out of that third round, I was like, okay, he's about to start, you know, taking over the fight, and especially the way the third round ended. So when the fourth round started, 
I expected it. I expected the round to look a lot like the third round, mm -hmm. you know, where he can would continue to separate himself. And if that was not the case, as he got caught, he got caught in the corner and he was and he was a little bit too comfortable. And instead of, you know, wrapping up or putting his hands up, you know, he just tried to use his athleticism to kind of get out of way of the punch. And, and he got caught. He got caught. He got caught. I um, mean, I just I also have to put it in there. He said, I got the better chin. And he said, said my chin conference. hasn't failed me in the press conference. He said, my chin's never failed me. He said, but we don't can't say the same about you. And, and he got caught with the chin. He got um, caught on the Yeah, he got caught on the cheek. And if you saw it, it saw the big, big ass bump on there. Um, But. Yeah, I mean, cause say again, I thought he was winning the rounds, but he got caught, and I say he should have wrapped up like he was doing in the other rounds, and got to give to Smith. He caught him good. Yep. He managed to close the distance, yep. get him in the pocket, in the ropes, and just knock down. Now the way you may got back up, I kind of thought they were gonna stop it, but I think you know they wanted yeah. to give him a chance. Give him a chance. Um, and then only because it was also just kind of like the fourth round. Yeah. But honestly, I don't even know if they would have did that with any other fight. I think they might have would have called it. Um, they yeah, it was, it was right. Yeah, I thought it was right for them to uh, call it off. Yeah. Um, and Liam got the win yeah. by knockout. Yeah, fourth he, round. Yeah, he, and, and, you know, and, uh, yeah, he took some shots, you know, coming in, but he stayed the course to land the, you know, the big shot. Yeah. And he was confident, um, all, you know, all in the buildup. He made it very clear that he expected he wouldn't have been shocked if this was the outcome. Right. And he's been in tough fights before. Yeah. We've seen he, him in there with Mugia. We've seen him in there with Canelo. Yeah, he's got tough fights. Mm -hmm. uh, he And he he's a veteran. Yep. He weathered the storm when he was having a little trouble at the mm -hmm. kitty and he got the win. So, yep. you know, shout out to him. Mm -hmm. Got the knockout. Uh, and what's next for him? What do you think? Yeah, and just to kind of talk about it, I mean, this is what makes, you know, boxing exciting because... There's not too many people who saw a knockout coming right we the, did within, it. you know, it, within the fourth round. Right. You know, so that was exciting to see. And, and, it, and it just it just shows why, we, you know, we love the sport because, you know, anything can happen. It's unpredictable. Yes. So with that being said. Yeah. What do, who do you think Liam's going to fight next? Or what do you want to see for them? They do have uh, a rematch clause. Yeah, they do have a rematch clause. And I wouldn't mind seeing the rematch. What do you think about the rematch? I think that's what I would want yeah. to see next. N yeah. Not Oh, go go ahead. Yeah, and uh, you made he made it he he made it clear after the fight. He goes, you know, I feel like I was winning the fight, you know, and I just got caught. He goes, I still feel like I have a case to to say that I'm the better, you know, I'm the better fighter. But he caught me with a good shot, and he was the better man on the night. Yeah, and so I would I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind a matchup. And I think the the build up and everything it's gonna be interesting. The characters yeah. and to how, see if it's gonna yeah, change. You yeah, think yeah. Yeah, so, so I would, I would, I would, I would be, I would be interested in watching the rematch. And yeah, that, I think that's what I want, want to see next because yeah. it was starting to be a good fight, and I just, I gotta see. Yeah, and fight. all, and with all the trash, with all the trash talk for it to end like that, right? You know, people are gonna right. be, people are definitely gonna be talking about this, and because you know the trash talk was good, good but top notch. So um, I would like to see what the trash talk looks like the second time around, yep. and just. You know, I think it would make for an interesting fight. Yeah, now I definitely was not. Do you think Liam's actually going to take it? Well, since there's a rematch clause, you right. know, he already said that he would take the, you know, rematch but if everything was, uh, everything was right. Up. Then, yeah. But do you think that's going to happen next? I don't know because you never know how boxing goes. Yeah. And I, I think I would want to see that next for, uh, for both okay. of them. I, I need to see that rematch. Okay. I mean, if it's not, if it's not a rematch, um, there's a, a couple others, uh, a couple other fights that I can kind of think of. Um, I probably think, you know, this time, this point in his career, uh, Liam Smith is looking to get a title shot. Before the fight, uh, Chris Eubank was ranked high in the two sanctioning bodies, the WBO, the WBC. He was ranked number two. Um, so we know those titles. Uh, Janibek holds the, the WBO. That's what I was going to say. I might want to see him fight next. So um, I think that would be a good fight, an interesting mm -hmm. fight. And that's another chance of him get a title. Mm -hmm. um, he did mention um, Triple G, but mm -hmm. and I'm not too interested in, in that fight. You know, they weren't neither one of the fighters were ranked high uh, for um, the WBA, which is uh, Triple G's belt. So, um, you know, I would I would rather see the Janibek. Mm -hmm. Um, is there another fight? That's, the that's exactly who I have in mind okay. for Janibek. Uh, I think I think that'd be a good matchup, and I think that would yeah. be a really exciting, explosive fight. Yes, yes, and because we've already seen him in there. Um, the other person that was high in the rankings was Mungia. 
we've already seen, you know, how that yeah. went. So I, if, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind the Janibek or, you know, with him being high in the WBC, Carlos Adamas. Carlos Adamas is, uh, he is in, I believe, um, in line to be the WBC champion if, uh, Jamal Charlo vacates because he's next in line. I believe he's the, either the interim champion or the, or the, um, I believe he's the interim champion for the, uh, for the WBC. That could be a, you know, uh, a fight, uh, in the States if he wanted to come to the States. But I said, you know, I think those three would be good. You know, yeah. Janibek, either Carlos Adamas or, uh, or the rematch. Yeah. You know, I, the re- I, I the really rematch. want to see the rematch. I really want to see the rematch and then whoever wins that, you know, get a title. Yeah. Like and this, if you look at that crowd, Janibek. and if you look at that crowd, I mean, I, I'm sure they wanted to probably see the rematch too. Yeah. I mean, it was a, it was, it was a packed crowd it in was there. It was a huge crowd. Um, yeah. you know, the UK, they always come out for Yeah. They come the out and they support. Team. They come, they come so out and they support. That's what's up. So yeah, I think that would be I I I that probably would probably be the bigger yeah. fight. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind seeing that rematch. But uh-huh. I, I like those other matches too. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. But uh yeah, but that's all we got. Uh let us know uh what you guys thought about the fight or how you thought it was gonna go. Um but uh that's all we got. Uh thanks for tuning in, y'all. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Or talk your shit. And we out. <laughs>